Hi, this is Jen Chance with Welcome Home Realty. We just listed a historical 170-year-old home near Athens, Illinois on three acres. We've invited a historian to tell us the details. This is the Jordan Farm in Menard County, Illinois. And the house behind me is an antebellum brick dwelling that was constructed by Henry Jordan sometime around 1849. It's an example of a certain kind of antebellum brick architecture that was popular in Menard County and of which there's very few left. I'm standing in what was the kitchen of the house when it was built in 1849. And it's a rare example of a pre-Civil War uh, cooking fireplace and associated cabinetry. What you see here is the original mantelpiece and the original walnut cabinetry. This is where you stored your food and at the fireplace is where you cooked it. This is pre-refrigeration. The, uh, the cabinets are made of walnut, local walnut by uh, local carpenters. It's very unusual to have these preserved. Uh, open hearth cooking was just fading away around in the 1840s and to be replaced by stoves. And so what happened is these tended to be covered up, replaced with a flue in the chimney. The, the mantles were replaced and these cabinets were replaced with something more modern. In this case, they were kind of just covered over and left to be. And that's why they're still preserved today. I'm standing in the southernmost of the two principal living spaces in the downstairs of the house. And you can see a lot of the original facets of this 1840s dwelling. Uh, for one, you can see that the ceiling, uh, you, the original oak rafters have been exposed because they've removed the plaster and just left those, those dimensional pieces of lumber in place. And you can even see where the lath had originally been attached and there's plaster marks there. Um, this was originally an exterior wall. So this is a window, window frame, and there's a, a kitchen addition through here. But right now, one of the things that this illustrates is the thickness of this house. Uh, the, uh, both the exterior walls and the partition walls are built of, of solid brick. And downstairs, it's three courses thick. Upstairs, it's two courses. And so these are, these are single pieces of oak or walnut um, made from very big trees. And in this case, you can see the, the trim work with this kind of mustard yellow uh, paint finish that's still intact. This is the original 1840s, 1850s finish that was applied to the home. And then the flooring also is original. This is wide sawn oak planking. Oaks were from around here. The mill that would have sawn this flooring was probably on the Sangman River. It's still intact, as is the original tall beaded baseboard with just that single bead made across the top, which is very common in the early and mid 19th century. So again, this is all very unusual to have this level of, of preservation for these kinds of architectural features. You, you know, this house is 170 years old and you tend to see this stuff ripped out little by little. In this case, it was lived with or it was covered over and thus it's still preserved. So this is the northernmost of the two main living spaces downstairs in the house. And what you can see here is another mantle and another fireplace, but you'll notice too that this fireplace is a little smaller because this fireplace isn't used for cooking, it's just for heating. And so the other space not having a fireplace, this one's probably a little more formal. And then this stairway, which was constructed in the early 90s, is actually uh, a modern alteration because the original stairway would pretty much be impossible for modern living. This house, built when it, at the time it was, would have had what's called a box stair. And it basically looked like a closet. It would have had a door here and you opened it up and you kind of walked in a spiral fashion up a set of very narrow stairs to get to the second floor. This makes this space much more livable today. Upstairs, originally, when the house was built, there were two bedrooms. And there are still two bedrooms up here today, although uh, it's been reconfigured a little bit for a sense of modern privacy, essentially. In 1849, you came up a little winding stair here in the corner and you walked into one bedroom and you had to walk through that bedroom to get to the back bedroom. So probably this is the children's bedroom and the parents lived in the bedroom next door. Today, it's been reconfigured so there's a hallway and a half bath. There are some intact pre-Civil War features to these bedrooms as well. We have another set of nearly identical uh, walnut cabinets here, very similar to what you see downstairs in the kitchen. Although in this case, this is used 
uh, to store clothing. And this is about all you would have needed. They didn't have big closets at the time. This would have been ample storage uh, for the, cl the, the clothing of a number of the residents of the house. And again, it's, it's completely intact. And the floor that I'm standing on is original to the house, but instead of oak, like we saw downstairs, this is pine. And during this period in the late 40s and early 50s, pine was just beginning to be shipped into Illinois from Wisconsin, and it was kind of the new fashionable wood. So unlike today where we prefer oak or walnut, back then this would have been pretty cool to have a pine floor. When the house was remodeled in the 1990s, there was an effort made to uh, replace any missing fixtures with period furnishings. And in this case, a number of the doors in the house are of the correct period, but they've been salvaged from houses that were being torn down in the area. If this was 1849, I'd be standing outside. But today, I'm inside and this room serves as the modern kitchen to the house. And the wall behind me is exposed brick that was originally the exterior wall of the house. So what you can see is not only a doorway that would have gone outside from one of the living spaces, but even a, a preserved window that provided light to that living space. Again, you have original surfaces, original finishes, original wide oak uh, timbering here, but now basically what was once outside is inside. A house that's 170 years old picks up a lot of history. I'm standing in the backyard and directly behind the modern kitchen is this small building here, a small frame building that was built probably in the 19 teens or 20s and it served as a laundry house. This is where they did their laundry. Uh, it was recently remodeled and it now serves as a home office. So out in the backyard is somewhat of a miracle of preservation. This is a massive 30 by 30 foot timber frame barn that was actually built at the same time the house was, sometime late 40s, early 50s, 1840s or 50s. And in this case, it doesn't look that old now because it's been very well cared for over a series of generations here at the farm. Uh, the original barn was lifted up in, in 1919 and they poured a concrete footing and floor in it, which in part saved the building. And then again, in the 1990s, the barn was sited in cedar and, and roofed in steel, which has preserved it. And inside, there's facets that still look like they did in the 1850s. We're in the loft of the barn. And what you can see here is one of several hand-hewn oak timbers. Uh, tree was probably cut down within a half a mile of here, probably on the farm. Squared off with an ax and could use to construct a timber frame barn. Um, it's all put together with mortise and tenon. Uh, it's tied together with these large wooden pegs that are called tree nails. Uh, technically, you can build the, the superstructure of a barn like this without a nail. And that's what they did here. And the entire superstructure of this barn is still intact. And this, as I said, is one of several of these timbers that actually span the entire width of the barn, 30 feet. This property is like nothing I've ever seen before. If you'd like to set up a showing and view it yourself, please call me, Jen Chance with Welcome Home Realty.